Hello everyone, today we're continuing our deep dive of Richard Dawkins and Yan Wong's book, The Ancestor's Tale. In this episode, we're going to discuss the evolution of insular flightlessness in birds. So, let's jump right in. So, PBS Eons recently covered the dodo's extinction in a really good video, link in the description. We're going to cover the dodo a bit differently, so don't think this is going to simply be a rehash of those points. Alright, let's get to it. When organisms arrive in new localities, they are often without predators, and so may undergo what is known as ecological release. In many cases, invasive species in new lands will rapidly increase in population size, as they outcompete native inhabitants. This can be easily observed in lionfish in the Atlantic Ocean or salvinia in many tropical and subtropical countries. Or a species may lose certain adaptations that they previously needed to survive. Since evolution is all about trade-offs, if you don't need some adaptation to survive, then you can divert those resources elsewhere. One really interesting example of this is in the Majorcan bovid Myotragus. The ancestors of Myotragus arrived on the island during the Mycenaean Salinity Crisis, when the sea level there plunged because the Gibraltar Strait had closed, cutting the Mediterranean Sea off from the Atlantic Ocean. Myotragus evolved predator-free for five million years until humans came to the island. However, during those five million years, Myotragus gradually moved its eyes from the classic artiodactyl position of eyes on the sides of the head to having them on the front of the head, since there was no need to be on the lookout for predators. Furthermore, the five chrono species of Myotragus neatly document increasing dental specialization and a decrease in expensive neural tissues. The dodo, Raphus cuculatus, too is a story of ecological release. Like the PBS Eons video pointed out, the cruelly named dodo wasn't stupid at all, any more than the tanagers of the Galapagos. Animals that have never seen a predator have no idea how to respond to one. It's the same reason people have to tell toddlers not to put their hands on fire. Anyway, Portuguese sailors first arrived on the Dodo's island of Mauritius in the early 1500s and made short work of the poor bird. Not only did the sailors eat the Dodo, but they released dogs, pigs, and rats that likely ate the bird's eggs. Furthermore, immigrants to the island chopped down forests for planting sugarcane. All of this disrupted the dodo's environment, eventually leading to its extinction. There were also a few reports from the 1600s of an alleged white dodo on the nearby island Reunion, but this appears to have been based on a misidentified extinct white ibis, Threskiornis solitarius. The white dodo is not the only mystery bird of Reunion. Another is the Reunion swamp hen, Porfirio carulescens. Despite having been drawn and written about by multiple people in the 16 and 1700s, there are no biological remains of the animal. It is entirely possible that the animal did exist, but was driven to extinction by human interaction in the 1700s. However, there is no hard evidence to verify this claim. As it happens, there are many such mystery birds like this, many of which are, strangely enough, parrots that only exist in the journals of well-respected naturalists. William Beebe famously named three mysterious genera of deep-sea fish he saw while in his bathysphere. But I digress. Intriguingly, as far back as the 1800s, some researchers had proposed that the dodo was a close relative of the Rodriguez solitaire, Pezifaps solitaria, and that both nested within the pigeons. Indeed, in 2002, a team of researchers took DNA from some dodo bones, bones of the Rodriguez solitaire, and bones from a variety of extant birds, and found that the dodo and solitaire are indeed large, flightless pigeons. The next closest relative of the two is the Nicobar pigeon, Calinus nicobarica, a beautiful bird from Southeast Asia. Very likely, a bird, probably not too dissimilar from the Nicobar pigeon, flew, as birds are wont to do, from its Asian home and island hopped across the Indian Ocean. 
Other closely related pigeons include the Victoria crown pigeon, Gura Victoria, and the tooth-billed pigeon, Didunculus strigirostris. Sadly, the latter bird is critically endangered. The dodo may seem at first glance to be very unlike a pigeon. The reason for this difference in appearance is their difference in timing and rate of development, which is called heterochrony, for which there are two extremes. Either development can be extended, resulting in paramorphosis, or development can be truncated, resulting in pedomorphosis. One form of this is called neoteny. A famous example of neoteny is the axolotl, which in a way stops development such that it retains features more typically associated with juveniles through adulthood. The drastic difference between the axolotl and even closely related salamanders are controlled by a few hormones. When axolotls are under environmental stress or exposed to iodine that forms precursors to thyroid hormones, it can induce spontaneous metamorphosis, making the axolotl look more like the normal salamander. Although for any axolotl pet owners out there, it is highly recommended to avoid such situations since this is not good for their health. The point is that heterochrony is a mechanism of evolution wherein changes of few factors involved in development can result in great phenotypic changes. This is similarly the case regarding the dodo's difference in appearance from most pigeons. The dodo is a neotenous pigeon that retains some juvenile features. If you look at baby pigeons, they do have some similarities with the adult dodo. Of note is that the common ancestor of the dodo and Nicobar pigeon lived 42.6 million years ago, while the common ancestor of the dodo and solitaire lived just 25.6 million years ago. However, neither Mauritius nor Rodriguez existed at that time. Mauritius is 7.8 to 6.8 million years old, while Rodriguez is just 1.5 million years old. This seems to imply that the ancestors of both the dodo and solitaire were island hopping long before they came to rest on their respective islands. Further, other large flightless pigeons have been found on Indo-Pacific islands. One comes all the way from Fiji, the Viti Levu giant pigeon, Natuneornis gigora. Another is Bountifaps obsoleta from Henderson Island in the South Pacific, and the giant but still flight-capable Tonginus burleii, from the kingdom of Tonga. Clearly, pigeons have a propensity for flying to islands and becoming large and or flightless. But this trend isn't exclusive to pigeons. A distantly related group of birds called the rails have also become independently flightless multiple times. Both Mauritius and Rodriguez have had flightless rails, Aphanapteryx bonesia and Leguati, respectively. Bizarrely, one species of rail, Dryolimnus cuvieri, apparently became independently flightless twice on the island Aldabra. The whole island was inundated at least one time about 340,000 years ago, so the bird arrived, went extinct on the island, and then re-invaded it. Hawaii, too, had 12 species of flightless rails before humans arrived. Parrots are another group of birds that have taken the path to flightlessness. Again, on Mauritius, there was a flightless parrot called Lophosotacus mauritianus, which was not extremely dissimilar from the critically endangered Kakapo strigops hebroptilus of New Zealand. One of my favorite lines from Douglas Adams' wonderful book, Last Chance to See, concerns the Kakapo. Adams writes, quote, Strangely, not only has it forgotten how to fly, it also seems to have forgotten that it has forgotten how to fly. Legend has it that a seriously worried kakapo will sometimes run up a tree and jump out of it, whereupon it flies like a brick and lands in a graceless heap on the ground. Close quote. Finally, there was the Adzebil, genus Aptornis, who was native to New Zealand. The Kiwi is another flightless native of New Zealand, but we'll talk about the Paleognaths in the next video of this series. So, that's the dodo's tale. Birds often arrive on islands through the power of their wings, but once they arrive, they become flightless due to lack of predation. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.